God for your goodness, grace, mercy over all our lives. And Lord, right now, Holy Spirit, as we come to your word, I acknowledge you as the greatest teacher and revealer of truth. And I ask that you think through my mind and speak through my mouth and let your words go forth in my own human wisdom, the demonstration of your spirit and power and the faith of your people will rest on you and your power. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, Deborah Ko. Okay, this morning is session four about faith, from faith to faith. And uh, I entitled this, Faith is Aggressive. Okay, now, many may misunderstand this aggressive word. So first, Aggressive just means that um, you uh, uh, someone who's aggressive is it, the the common understanding is that they are violent, right? Uh, it has a little bit of that. It has that meaning, and also a person aggressive and want to fight, okay, and also can be forceful, uh, want to win, okay. That that's basic meaning of aggressive. But remember, we are talking about spiritual, not physical. Even last few weeks about fighting the fight of faith, it is not physical. I know most of you come from still in the, a lot in the five senses realm. Okay, uh, so many things the Bible says, we tend to take it very physical. All right, now you need to look from the spiritual point, all right? When everything in the Bible, God is talking about spiritual. If you get the spiritual correct, then it will manifest correctly in the physical realm, okay? Fighting is not fight against one another, <laughs> okay? All right? It is fighting against the evil one, the, the spiritual, the darkness, all right? I will go into this, and uh, as we as I go along, I will share more to have to let you have the understanding of what it means by uh, fighting the fight of faith or uh, faith is aggressive. So first, Apostle Paul, in training his son, this is in Timothy, all right, uh, for ministry, tells Timothy. I'll give you the scripture. Okay. Okay, about what serving the Lord means by giving three examples. Okay, that's in Second Timothy, right? So I'll bring it out first. This is about those who want to serve the Lord, those who are a little bit more mature, all right? Uh, they're not baby Christians, as in babies who just always cry, 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 and then, you know, all they think about is themselves. But a little bit more mature, it doesn't matter, it's three years Christian, one year Christian, ten years Christian. Okay, mature Christian maturity or spiritual maturity does not depend on physical uh, calculation of age. All right, if a person can be one year Christian, but in that one year, the spirit man grew a lot, all right, the mind renewed a lot according to God's word, that person can be considered more mature, all right, wanting to serve the Lord, able to serve with certain more, with more ability to serve the Lord. So this is son, uh, Apostle Paul and the son Timothy. Timothy was a trainee pastor, all right? He has a, a calling and a passion to serve the Lord. Okay, so that means he is a shepherd already with some sheep to take care of. Sheep are people, eh? So Paul gives illustration in training Timothy. He tells Timothy about serving the Lord giving three examples, okay? One is like a soldier, all right? Second one, like an athlete. And the third one, like a farmer. That is serving the Lord, like a soldier, all right? Because we all come from the physical, so we understand what a soldier in the physical does. So Paul is trying to relate, all right, the... the uh, spiritual to the physical, using physical examples to help human beings understand. 
Okay, it's not asking you all to become a soldier and then go and kill the enemy, your neighbor who is disturbing you, your husband persecuting you, your wife. You know, it's not that. Okay, it's spiritual. All right, spirit, soul, and body. We have this physical realm that we see with our five senses, and you have the spiritual realm that we cannot see, but it is there. This is very, very important. Okay, even how many times I may have repeated, it may still not yet get in. Okay, so like a soldier, like an athlete, I did a bit on athlete in the last few sessions, like a farmer as well. That's how you serve the Lord. All right, or one serves the Lord. So in 2 Timothy 2, 1 to 2, you therefore, my son, be strong. This is where the three examples come from, 2 Timothy chapter 2. You therefore, my son, right? Paul calls Timothy his son, although he's not his biological son, all right? Spiritual, <laughs> okay. I think I better always mention spiritual and physical, okay. <laughs> Otherwise, your I talk here one side, the other, your mind go another side, okay. This is ministry where we take our sheep or who uh, as our spiritual children, all right. I mentioned many times. Paul says to the even to the Corinthian church, if you may have. Many instructors in the Bible, in spiritual knowledge, but you have very few fathers, all right? Father, meaning a parent, okay? Someone who care for you. Instructor, just teach you on it. So here, the church is like a family, right? You have God as father. And God appoints his uh, fivefold ministers, okay? Not just to instruct. Teacher, give the gift of teaching, apostle, uh, uh, prophets and all that. It's not just to teach you. If you come to church with the intention, I just want to learn, then you are just going to, like going to a school, going to a Bible school. But teaching is inside. Well, the main thing is to see the church, the Jesus as the head and we as the body, as a family, as one. Okay, it's no point learning, learning all the principles and it's going to Bible school like that. Then you come out, you got hate knowledge. Here is our family. What you learn, you're able to apply. And the main thing is the love of Jesus first. Okay? And knowing God as Father. Knowing that our brothers and sisters are spiritual brothers and sisters. We are tied together through the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus flows through each one of our Vein, spiritual vein. Okay, this we learn everything in the con in the context of a church, a body, a family. All right, what you are part of, you cannot say, oh, I go to Bible school, I learned that I must be a soldier, so I go out there and I join one uh, mission there and go and fight for Jesus. <laughs> okay, we learn spiritual truths and revelations by being part of the body of Christ, a local church. So when you decide which local church you want to be part of, the first thing is understanding that we are a family. All right, that is not easy to understand because people live in the physical and they are just can only understand my physical family. My family is my, you know, husband, my wife, and my biological children or parents. When it's come to the spiritual, when you receive Jesus, you got born again. Your family now is the spiritual family okay not asking you to uh, get rid of your physical family all right but this is the renewal of the mind this is the understanding of the spiritual realm from there you grow okay so serving the lord the means willing paul uh, uh who is that uh timothy was have uh, given his life to jesus to serve jesus and now his mentor or father, spiritual father, is Apostle Paul. Okay? And Apostle Paul tells him <clears throat> in chapter 2, he says to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. All right? First is to be strong. Again, spiritual. <laughs> I really, really have to stress this. Okay? Spiritual. 
all these are about spiritual, your spirit first, your spirit man. So because when you hear the word strong, our mind thinks, okay, strong, <laughs> muscle. <laughs> okay, a determined man, a determined woman, strong in the mind. Okay, no, it's in the spirit. All right. And first aspect is in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. And I, as I said, grace, many don't really fully understand this meaning of grace. Okay, other than the, uh, what getting the, the, the good that you don't deserve. All right, the grace is to realize because Paul, as a servant of the Lord, he said, What by the grace of God I am what I am, but the grace towards me was not in vain, but I do more than any one of the rest of the believers. All right, grace is has much deeper meaning than just blessings, undeserved blessings. All right. A grace of God working in our lives, the grace of Jesus uh, working in our lives causes to humble ourselves, causes to realize where we came from, how horrible a sinner we were until Jesus saved us. If we have not seen how horrible we were in our sin and old man and old, old woman, the old person, we have not understood grace at all. Okay, that's why it starts from there an understanding of how horrible was that old person inside us without Christ. That a revelation from there will bring you to serving the Lord. All right? And faith. The things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. So Paul teaches Timothy like a son to him. Then tell him that all those things that I taught you, all right? I commit these things. That means what? Paul Timothy must have been keeping all these spiritual things that Paul teaches him in his heart. All right? And applied it in his life. And now he's able to, like a store like that, to be able to give it to others. Not from the head. Okay? From the head, everyone can just Google. All right? You want to know something? You just Google. There is a, uh, a, a caption poster. Is it? Google doesn't have all the answers. Bible has. <laughs> so those of you who like to Google a lot. <laughs> all right? Bible has. God has. Okay, Google is just a help. If you use it, for me, I use it to help to find uh, the text of the scripture. I can remember the scripture content and text, but sometimes forget exactly which book it is from, which verse. I use that. That's all. That is, comes in very handy. <clears throat> then, to faithful men, men who, faithful men means our idea of faithful men, it has two meanings here. Our idea is must be faithful to one wife, must be faithful, you know, that kind of thing, loyal and all that. Yes, it has a meaning of that, but mainly it means must have faith. People with faith, that means who can believe God, and not the other beliefs that is not in line with God. And therefore, they are able to teach others. Teach does not just mean stand on the pulpit, all right, as a teacher, and then expo uh, 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 teach people. No, we teach through our lives, all right? Your children learn a lot through the parents' way of life, correct? Yeah. Men, parents, elder children, don't do this. What Sometimes when they grow bigger already, they say what to you? Why I cannot do, but you, daddy, can do? <laughs> so <laughs> that's living by example, right? We don't realize everything we do, someone is looking. All right. So this is what Paul says to his son. You, therefore, so... Remember, it is to those who want to serve the Lord. Do therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So the first example that Paul gives is like a soldier. Second, in the TPD, overcome every form of evil as a victorious soldier of Jesus, the anointed one. So saw this picture, all right, of the cross. All right, many soldiers. Again, don't go after this, go and buy army, so army baju uniform <laughs> and then go take a cross there. And then, I am a soldier of Jesus Christ, spiritual, 
Okay, there is a scheme which I grew up with when we were young. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, these soldiers of the cross. Lift high the royal banner. He must not suffer loss from glory, victory unto victory. <clears throat> His army shall he lead. All right, stand up, stand up for Jesus. And you can see that the early days Christians are so on for the Lord. Okay, uh, on fire for the Lord. Okay, then, <clears throat> of course, there's a story behind who wrote this hymn. Uh, but this is what it, it is from uh, 2 Timothy, and it talks about the armor and so forth. And I would just like to clear this part for uh, this morning because uh, of the, the video that Ching Lan uh, posted in uh, Blazing Jewels this morning. Anybody saw the video? Uh, okay. Uh, all right. So when you first saw it, Abigail, how did you feel? Um, I don't feel good about it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. When I first saw it, I felt like 1,000 arrows <laughs> came at me and I felt so down. I said, what on earth is this? <laughs> All right. Okay. And the title there is, Look at what God what God is doing. It is so misleading. Okay. It's, and then when I saw it, I saw... Why I thought it was this person punishing all the students. <laughs> yeah, because they were uh, hands at the at the wall or something like that. It was so horrifying. It was like terrorism to me. And look at what God is doing. This is exactly like the terrorists, right? In the name of God, they bring out like soldiers like that, you know, everyone. You are doing a favor for God. Pray like this. That's why I say don't pray like this. <laughs> okay? Until, like, we don't need to pray until sweat already. Jesus did that in the Garden of Gethsemane. All right? Now, our prayer is in the Spirit. All right? What is on fire, you need to recognize by now. This is not to say it's not of God or whatever, or they are not safe, the, 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 the children in that school. I mean, if a child looks at it, do you want to be a Christian after that? <laughs> I see also, I scared. I want to run away. You know, it's just like extremists. Okay. But it, I'm not saying whether that, but, but the first thing when that the person who was uh, leading the so called prayer in this, in this school, in this school, in this school, wow. <laughs> have you ever prayed like this in this church in this church you all must wear armor it's not like that okay time to understand I cannot teach you a uh, formula how to recognize what is of God by now after three and a half years you should be able to sense in your spirit God doesn't do it this way there's no harshness in God but there is firmness all right, there is discipline. Okay, the discipline is discipline our body. <laughs> okay, not to be lazy, but discipline our mind. But not in a physical sense, like the military, like that, the army. That's why, in a way, it's good that uh, I saw that, uh, although I wish I didn't see, because normally I don't really look at anything that anybody posts before preaching or teaching. Okay, but since this topic is about soldiers for Christ, it is good to understand this. And I do not want to, actually all this while, I don't like to put rules all right, on anyone in this church, but I have to now set one rule here, <laughs> which is no posting or anything from YouTube or where, wherever you found okay, onto the public groups. Uh, imagine that you want to drink poison, you drink yourself. <laughs> Don't give other drink people drink also. Uh, that applies to everybody. All right? It's not scolding you. I have never put this in uh, because I don't want to control anybody. i got no time to control your lives. All right? But if what is being posted is going to negatively affect others, I have to stop it, right? Because they are part of my shit. 
that I care for and a lot. Okay, so if you really find you think a video, as I said, uh, why you all are so free to go and look at all this? <laughs> when I ask you to do meditation, listen to my sermon, also cannot, no time, but you got time to look at all these other things and then you are still not matured. And definitely everyone here is not yet there. Okay, able to discern what is law, what is grace, what is able to divide fully the word of God. If you are not sure, be like Dahlia, she will ask me. <laughs> okay. Ah, Pastor, this one, you know. Okay, so if you really think it's something is so good, then you post it in the service group, or you can ask me if it's, I will just look one look, I will know whether uh, good or no good already, because I'm not going to waste time looking into it. <clears throat> okay, it, 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 it pollutes me. I don't like drinking poison. I don't like eating bones. All right, the bones choke me. Okay, so uh, please do not post. Uh, if it is something right, harmless, I, I just look, okay, la, nothing much, then it's okay. I will just overlook it. All right, but somehow this morning, I just felt to go and open that one. <laughs> Maybe because I woke up very early or so. But I felt I was praying in tongues and I felt to open that video. And I said, oh, no. All right, so on the safer side, because I don't have time to go after everyone who posts something. <laughs> All right, just don't post in the public uh, things if you want, you can post in the service group. All right, or you think that it's super good, then you can share with me first. All right, because others already you also cannot discern which is what, and then others even younger than you. Lagi cannot discern, right? And they will swallow the bones together. They kill people. Paul says, the law kills. The spirit gives life. Okay? So it is not that <clears throat> I want to control your lives. Please, eh? if you know me for so long, I, you can do whatever you all want to do. <laughs> I never say, no, you cannot do this. No, you cannot go there. Up to you. All right? But when it affects others, I have to say something. Okay? Others here, like, others outside, I also don't care. All right? Others in this under my care. All right? Okay. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. So remember, this is spiritual warfare. Okay? This is not, don't after this, take up a sword, take, take up, you know, and go outside and fight your husband or neighbor or wife. Okay, so you are engaged in a spiritual warfare, all right? You don't entangle. You know, entangle, yeah, you, like a knot like that, himself with the affairs of this world. See, it's talking about this world and spiritual world, the two worlds. If you want to fight in the spiritual world, okay, or we understand that the war is over. Yes, Jesus has defeated the devil, but the devil is still here. All right, in the spiritual world, until the end times, after the second coming, then he will be thrown into the uh, into a chain for 1,000 years and eventually thrown into the lake of fire forever. But before that, he is still on this earth. And again, what power does he have? For now, Elijah, what power does the devil have? To lie to us. Yes, just, just lies on it. All right, tricks, strategy, his strategy is lies. But if you do not recognize a lie, then we don't even know it is the devil. All right? Okay, so if you want to be engaged as a soldier, this is example one, as a soldier in spiritual warfare, the enemy, number one, you must know who okay, is the devil behind everything. Last week, I talked about pride. I talked about about distractions and so forth. Those are enemies that you don't recognize. They first thing, do not entangle themselves with the affairs of this world. Doesn't mean everyone stop working, stop living, and then uh, uh, just go preach the gospel. Okay, so the entanglement is between your uh, soul area, your emotions and your thinking, and of, of course, body too sometimes, so that he may please him who listed him as a soldier. 
first of all, you need to know who, who called you, who appointed you, who enlisted you as a soldier. Soldier means you are working for a commander, correct? The Lord Jesus is our commander-in-chief. He is the one that appointed us into his army. So you say, oh, spiritual need army. Ah. That's why you have the terrorists in other religion, right? They are living like army, right? Thinking that God wants, uh, 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 wants them to kill their enemies. Living back in the days of the uh, Jewish uh, nation where everything was physical. I mean, not everything, ah, right? They were living in the physical realm, uh, <clears throat> Jesus haven't come yet. Okay, so you need to know who you are serving. Are you serving Jesus or serving? <laughs> or serving can be anyone. That means who you listen to. All right, who you listen to, who you want to please the most. Is it your wife, your husband, Jesus? When it comes to between the person and Jesus. If I, as your pastor, tell you to do something against God, then you better don't listen to me. All right? Okay. Because he is your pastor, master. He is the one who enlisted you. In, in an easy version, any soldier who fights in a war does not. This is example from the physical so that you can understand the spiritual realm. Any soldier who fights in a war does not become busy with other things. Hmm? The distraction and all that will cause us to be busy with other things. And then when it comes in the spiritual, we're not very sure how to what to do. He only wants to fight well to make his captain happy. Nobody who serves in the military. <laughs> okay, no, this is not the physical military. Yeah. Spiritual gets tied up with civilian matters so that they can please the one who recruited them. So you can see in the church of, let's say, a thousand believers, how many are out there able to serve the Lord, able to preach, able to bring souls to Jesus, able to disciple others? Majority are tied up with Civilian affairs, right? What is that? I've been sharing. What is civilian affairs? Example. In the worldly, worldly affairs, huh? what we do in our physical world. Yes, civilian, in your family, in your job, all right, business. That means, you can you see a soldier have to come out from their family, right? Have you seen a soldier bring their family along <laughs> to the to the uh, army camp or to, to the war camp to war? Go on up. No. When you decided to be a soldier, whoever here, I think Singapore, they have to go for training. Do you bring your mother along? <laughs> Say, oh, I need to go for training as a soldier. No, Deborah had to go for, I don't know what they call that. Eh? Uh, soldier training. Uh. What is it called? Uh? Then you say, excuse me, I want to bring my mother along. I'll bring my brother along. I'll bring my sister along. All these civilian. Oh, can I work while I'm still, uh, okay, physical, physical. Well, uh, and do you have things like soldier can study online one to become a soldier, part-time? Oh, can I go for part-time classes to be a soldier? When I'm free, I go attend how to be a soldier. Being a soldier, it's, it's not just like being an accountant or something you, you do in the office. It is going out into the field, life and death, physical. It's a, you're faced with life and death. Any moment, you can lose your life. Any moment, right, you defend your country. Okay, that they, they are trained for that. Okay, to defend and to offend. So that's why... Not many will want to be soldiers, right? Sometimes the parents say, Ayo, when the son said, I want to be a soldier, and say, Ayo, can you choose other profession? Why? <laughs> because they say it's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. You can lose your life. And because of that fear, many, not many will go to become a soldier or even training. Correct? 
Yes, but Bible, Paul, God, and likens serving the Lord as like a soldier, spiritual. You know how to detach yourself from the affairs of this world. Civilian, right? But there are, you know, like, like uh, those with many, many children. And you say, oh, I cannot, you know, serve the Lord because I've got so many children. If God has called, that's not a problem. You know, Maria Woodward, Maria Woodward Etta, she has, I think, six over children like that. But, she, but God used her powerfully, called her with all her children. I don't know how to handle them. To go preaching the gospel. Signs and miracles happened. Many people got saved. Many got, got healed. All right. Civilian. Children is not an excuse. It's just whether you want to or not, then we seek God's way of how to serve Him. All right. The many missionaries who came to our land from America, they are married, they got children. What do they do? They bring their children along. All right. Whatever it is, they'll. When we, uh, when the devil distract us with civilian affairs, right? Some is a job, can be business, can be job, whatever we are doing in our personal life, and we say, Lord, I cannot wait till wait till I got the money, then I don't have to work, and then I can come and serve you. That time Jesus come already. Oh, he he will probably just use another person. Okay, so. You can give all the excuses, pastor, your case different, my case different, and so forth. It's better don't even say anything. If you don't want to be a soldier, it's fine. <laughs> okay, just stop there. All right, but if God put the fire inside you, right, that you desire to serve the Lord, but you are in that situation. Yeah. <clears throat> then he will help you. He will show you the way. So, and then, Another civilian matters, if I were to put it in our easy to understand, you're still fighting flesh and body, right? Making decisions, so don't know whether I should please my husband or please my wife, or you know, and then inside who is making decision is the flesh making, is the spirit making. I still haven't gone through this thing. That's why I made a lot of people in the church Christians are still baby stage. Okay, we are all tied up with our own matters, the dog, the cat. So if you have no time for the lot, don't buy another cat. <laughs> Cannot. <laughs> you say, all oh, this is just not wisdom. You say, we say, we, oh God, I don't have time for you. Don't have, I want to serve you, but I don't have time for you. And then we got time to go and wash the cat, wash the dog, feed the dog, and feed the dog. I mean, if you have a lot of time, go ahead. Go ahead, do whatever you want. All right, and you still have a lot of time for the Lord. You must be a retired one. <clears throat> but if not, then we need to know what is the priority in our, in our lives. If God has put inside your heart that you want to use your time wisely to serve Him, then start doing something about your time. What is not important, just forget about it. In my uh, ministry 20 years ago, 40 years ago, I know that I want to serve the Lord already, so I don't care if the house is in a mess, whatever. I don't have time for all that. Go to work, come back, or rather don't even sometimes don't come back until everything over. Remember, those days it's not like you're also pampered. Zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> Just zoom on it. Zoom also so difficult to attend Zoom already, right? It's your choice, all right? So, this is what it requires. Hey, imagine a physical soldier on the handphone in the army camp, training camp. A general, commander, excuse me, uh, my wife calling. <laughs> excuse me, uh, my child calling. Excuse me, uh, my, my boss calling, my, uh, who else, my partner calling. And then can I take leave or not, you know, while training? Uh, I need to be excused. Ay, how, uh? So, to be the effective servant of the Lord, training, uh, 
we have to entangle ourselves with all this in our spirit, in our heart. Is it that hard? Two hours, three hours during uh, service or listening to sermon and teaching of your handphone? <clears throat> Don't talk to anyone. Listen, pay attention. That one also cannot how to become soldier. <laughs> Very easy. Shot down by the enemy. Okay. <clears throat> All right, continue. A soldier wants to please his commanding officer. This is in the children's version. He, so he does not waste his time. All right, same verse. Look at all the versions, all that, what it means. All right, because okay, King James so hard to understand. Now they've got so many versions to, that even Deborah Cole also can understand, correct? Uh, even I think the twins also can understand. <laughs> Don't. Waste, he does not waste his time doing the things that most people do. What other things? Play too much time, computer games, whatever. And then we say, no time lah, to serve you a lot. No time to go out, give up tracks. No time to uh, go and say hello to the neighbor and share or whatever. No time. No time to meditate. No time. But go full into their time, see how much time is wasted. Click YouTube. They won't got time. <laughs> go listen to rubbish. They won't got time. All right. Huh? Do not waste time. Which is priority? Do you realize that here we have a purpose on this earth? Short time left. If you watch all uh, movies and all that, right? Uh, especially the science fix, science, science type. The man is looking for immortality. They want to live forever. <clears throat> All right, because they want to have more time. I saw one uh, some time ago that says <clears throat> the president or whoever wants to uh, live forever because they know that the time span naturally is only about. 80, 70 years old, 80, 100, Bible tells us 120. But they want to live because they got money. You know, those people who got money, they don't want to die, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, Michael Jackson, who else? They got a lot of money. They make the whole their life. They live on this earth making money, make money, 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 money. Then after that, oh, already. By the time they got the millions and billions, they are already 70 years old or 80. They're scared already because now, they want to enjoy the money, it's time to go. So they try to hopefully prolong their lives. Very sad. But no one since Adam. Have you seen anyone who lived from Adam's time still around here? Everyone have to die. Everyone. It is appointed unto man wants to die and after that the judgment because of sin. All right, man was intended never to die physically or spiritually, but because of sin, everyone has to die. So you collect, that's why they say, collect, 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 whoa, 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 for all the money and then you die, leave it where it cannot take anything to the next world. All right, because the people out there don't know where they are going. <clears throat> don't waste time. If I teach you one-to-one, -one, those who are willing to learn, then I will say, please put a clock. <laughs> I have clock everywhere. I watch my time. Even though I am retired from the secular job, I don't like just waste the time, do nothing. I see what time I must finish this, what time I must finish that, by what time I must finish this. So I need clock. But in the younger days, I wear watch to sleep. Watch is part of my... Uh, oh, you know what I wear. I must wear, wear to sleep because I need to know what time, get up, what time. Time is very important because once you miss it, gone. It has a lot to do with discipline, right? <clears throat> very important, time. Don't If, if you don't do that, then... The day is gone already. And nowadays, in the last days, time is passing even faster than 10 years ago. 
ago or 40 years ago. 40 years ago, like very slow. Like that. I went, went, once I went to Philippines mission in a particular island and village. I don't know why the, the, the time there, like very slow. You do a lot of things, it's still very bright. Okay, certain countries like that. Now it's not like that anymore. You don't have time. You still can waste time doing hobbies and whatever. It, as I said, you've got plenty of time, go ahead. But if you think you want to serve the Lord, what is the important things to you to do with your time? And how to discipline yourself with time? Do not waste time as a soldier. I cannot imagine in the army, physical, right? A soldier comes in, cannot wake up in the morning. Right? When the commanding officer said, go for, you know, they have certain things to do. And they said, huh? Time already. Ah. So if you miss the lunch time, no more lunch for you. Ah. The days when I was working 40 years, ah, <clears throat> corporate, almost 20 years. Every, whenever there's a public holiday, that is the time I wake up the earliest. Because that holiday, I have a lot of things to do. All right now, is I see people public holiday, they sleep until twelve o'clock. <laughs> not saying you cannot do. Okay, this is not about can or cannot. This is about what you see as important in your life. What is important to you? Is serving the Lord the most important thing to you now, or not yet? Okay, if not yet, you won't be doing all this. All right. But if you have a desire to serve God, these are the things that you need to learn to discipline your body, discipline the mind, okay, as a soldier. Because what we are fighting with is not flesh and blood, the Bible tells us. All right, we will have more verses as we go along the word of God. Any moment someone can go to hell, any moment someone can die, death does not say, hello, uh, you know, it's coming already. To so and so. It just happened. Anything can happen anytime. A soldier can be called into fighting war anytime. A soldier on duty, that's why it's whether you are on duty or not, not the duty roster. <laughs> In your spirit, are you serving the Lord? Are you having that passion? God, I am your servant. I want to live the rest of my life on this earth serving you. That is on duty. That means you're on the alert. Okay? Not the duty roster. Only Sunday you're on duty to do this one. Okay? So I do this one. <laughs> Till Saturday I do this one. Then I do this one. See what has happened to the church, the people of God. Reduced to physical duties. I, I'm not saying that no good, right? Probably if you do it from your heart, you will have a reward. Huh? But this is not the real serving the Lord, the true serving the Lord. It is all the time ready. Then that soldier, don't you think in the army, the soldier has to be all the time ready? Except when he wants to go toilet. Huh? <laughs> in the toilet, huh? that one cannot. <laughs> Nature call. Other than that, he has to be all the time ready. The commanding officer says, okay, now you have to go. You cannot say, wait, uh, I am on internet. <laughs> Don't have. Okay? So this is the spiritual soldier. That if you are, you want to be there, serving the Lord, then don't get caught up in making deals in the marketplace. Say, oh no, I'm watching the stock. I have my business. I just invested in that one. Don't enlist as a soldier. You become a half past six soldier. People will die at your hands. All right? You have work. We have marketplace business. That is not our priority for a soldier. For a soldier, his priority is serving the commander. Spiritually, it's our Lord Jesus. All right? Wisdom and how to do it, we learn along the way. <clears throat> okay? How to dissociate ourselves from our business, from our job, from our family and all that, not physical. Sometimes it may be physical. Say, oh, no, 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 this time I uh, cannot, uh, that time I uh, cannot, uh, it's okay. All right? 
just that that is not what the soldier, spiritual soldier, is. Otherwise, there will be so many more thousand ministers out there. A church of 30,000 should have at least 20,000 people going to evangelize the world or making disciples. Why 1,000 only got one? <clears throat> he concentrates. So what is he concentrating? That means the mind, right? The mind is not on the business. So if you may, you may be having business or working, your mind is not there. At the time needed, your, time, your mind can pull there, but not all the time your mind is there. Ayo, how my business doing? Uh, uh, good, uh, not good. Uh. What? He concentrate on carrying out the master's orders. Listening, learning how to build the spirit man. Learning how to listen to Holy Spirit. Learning how to obey God and not man. That is his priority. For every soldier called to active duty in the TPT, is active, must divorce himself from the distractions of this world. Some say, oh yeah, during your time, Pastor, no handphone to distract you, no what, uh, TV got ma? <laughs> no, ah, all ex nonsense. At every generation, there are things to distract. It's up to us. Remember Robert Slyden? Yeah, he at age teenager, eight years old, the Lord called him. I think the Lord called you also, don't know, never hear. <laughs> it's not that God don't want to call you. <laughs> okay. So he sacrificed all the distractions of his teenage years of going pathology, falling in love, whatever, you know, doing the things that other teenagers do at his generation. It is a choice, a decision that he made then he decided to be a soldier for Jesus Christ. And he knew what God wanted him to do, right? For him, especially at that time, was to go and meet all the uh, great generals of God. That's why you call the servants of God generals. And they are in the army. They have to fight. There is a fight of faith. When you serve the Lord, it's not passive, sit down there, whatever come, come up, or do whatever you think, no, it is whatever he wants you to do, not what we think we want to do for him. He wants us to do, all right, that he may fully satisfy the one who chose him. Are you in direct connection with the Lord? Can you really hear him? If you don't even know the word, how do you know who is talking? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This is now we go to Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 10, verse 11. Everyone is very familiar with this, or, or also every Christian, right? Wear the full armor of God, wear God's armor so that you can fight against the devil's tricks. This is, is it Old Testament? It's new. Is it the, the one who taught grace? It's Paul. He's talking about when you want to be strong in the Lord as a soldier, Right, you need to put on the full armor of man of God. So God has an armor spiritual for your spirit man. Okay, because you need to fight against the devil's tricks. Ah, he didn't say you go fight against the, the devil. The devil's tricks. The devil as a being has been totally defeated, but not yet fully put into the prison, the final prison, still on this earth. And the Christians are supposed to be God's soldiers on this earth, <clears throat> the believers, and not allow the devil to trick you like he tricked Adam and Eve. Oh no, he didn't trick Adam. Adam chose to disobey. He tricked Eve, the living. <clears throat> So in order to fight against devil's tricks, you need to put on armor, spiritual armor. So don't just put the armor, this and this, that on your, <clears throat> as a collection. Understand what this is. Our fight is not against people on earth. ICB so that children can also understand. Our fight is not against people on earth. Can you all remember that? 
Okay, you're not fighting against people. You're not fighting against your neighbor, your pastor, whoever. You are fighting against the rulers and authorities and the powers of this world's darkness. Huh? Who are you fighting, Hannah? Against rulers and authorities, powers of the world's darkness. That means what? Spirit beings that you cannot see with your physical eyes. Isn't it? If you can see the horns come out, you will know that that's the devil. One lie, someone come in with nice coat and tell you, this, 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 this. Do this. Don't waste your time listening to Pastor Deborah. <laughs> she tell you. <laughs> right? You cannot recognize what is true, what is false. Right? It don't come like that. Even can come, the devil can come as an angel of light. We are not going to focus on the devil. But this is part of our training to recognize as a born again Christian soldier of the Lord, servant of the Lord, we need to recognize that it's a devil properly. Okay? We are fighting against what? Spiritual powers of evil in the heavenly world. Spiritual world. If you are so sense rule, <laughs> you only can see what you get with your five senses things only. These people cannot be used right, by God. They can go to heaven, of course, <clears throat> by believing in Jesus, but they stop there. All right, babies don't go to war, right? After, after they grow up strong, then physically they will go out and become soldiers. Spiritual babies cannot go out to war. So recognize it is the fight of faith, the fight is the fight against the evil tricks, the lies of the evil one that comes to your mind and your emotions. That is why we need to get God's full armor. Okay? Why you need to wear God's armor? Hannah? To fight against the spiritual power. In because our fight is not physical. All right, because your enemy is not physical. Your enemy is not the person uh, jealous of, of you. It's behind that that is a spiritual force. All right, because of the existence of the devil who uses lies and tricks, you need to put on the full armor. If not, you are easily defeated. This that is why you need to get God's full armor. Then on the day of evil, you will be able to stand strong. All right? And when you have finished the whole fight, you will still be standing. Right? Person, lose the fight. It's no more standing, right? Put on truth. I'm not going to go through all. I'm just going to go through one this morning. Put on truth as a belt to strengthen you to stand in triumph. Truth is God's word. Thy word is truth. I did that uh, last few lessons. Yeah, if you say you want to know whether with lies or not, what do you do? You don't go and listen to something and say, "Is it a lie or not?" How do you know whether it's a lie? How would you know whether it's a lie, Hannah, or truth? Whether someone says something is a lie or a truth? No, uh, which is not against uh, God's uh, God's uh, words. Yes, you need to know what is the truth. <laughs> okay, you need to know what is the truth in order to detect a lie, isn't it, Elijah? Yeah, if you don't know what's the truth, then you are what the world calls this English word called gullible because you just don't know what's the truth. Then the people like, like this type of people, right? They don't know what's the truth. You know what, anything. So you just tell them anything, uh, they will listen, they will obey, they will follow. We need to know the truth. And then the Bible says very clearly, thy word is true. And thy word only got one verse. 
How many scriptures there? How many chapters there? How many books there? You still got time to waste? <laughs> Put on holiness as an armor. Stand on your feet alone always. This is the gospel of peace. Okay, As I said, I'm not going to go into all this for this morning. <clears throat> And you'll always be ready to share the blessing of peace on your feet, wear the good news of peace to help you stand strong. So this is about continuously uh, giving good news. Now, this is the one that I'm coming, want to do this morning. In every battle, that means there is a battle that we are fighting. Now, the main war has been fought already 2,000 years ago. All right, Jesus already defeated the devil in hell itself when he went to the cross for you and me. So now there are little battles along our journey in life. Now in this everyday battle, take faith as your wrap around shield. Notice uh, some words here. For it is able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming at you from the evil one. So in a battle, the devil is shooting arrows at God's children. Okay, so if they are not soldiers, they don't know how to fight, all die already. <laughs> die as in not physical, sometimes physical also. We, do, we cannot, we don't know how to fight against disease and sickness, which is from the devil. We end up living shorter than the intended lifespan. Right? So he shoot arrows and we need to know then they are like fire. That means flaming arrows can destroy a person, can burn a person. Okay? <clears throat> so it's not to, the, you know, Christians say, oh, you're so scared. I don't talk about the devil. I'm so scary. Paul talks about the devil. Not only in Ephesians, Corinthians, and everywhere else of God. All right? But he tells us how to handle the devil or rather how to win the fight with the devil. Mm -hmm. First, think that is, first we must realize, don't think that, oh, now I'm safe under grace. Everything I do is fine. What rubbish is that? <laughs> we need to know the spiritual war you have just entered into after you receive the Lord Jesus. What the devil wants to do is incapacitate you, right? Make all your hands, your feet, all cannot work one in the spiritual realm. Mobilize, paralyze the Christian. Then you end up with what? A Christian just received the Lord. Paralyzed, right? So go, someone carry them, sit in the church pew every Sunday. That's what most Christians do, correct? Sit there. No, most of the time fall asleep or so. And then after that, someone take them up, go back home. That is the lifestyle of most baby Christians. Or some just do some duty in the church. Is that all? Look at the truth of the Bible is that there will be certain times the devil will come at you, all right, and shoot some arrows at you. Uh, see what are these. Then he says, take up the shield of faith. Above all, that means above all the other things that uh, was written uh, earlier scriptures, the armor, the most important armor of all the different parts is the shield of faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Because you may be living everything blessed, everything very nice, got money, got house, got car, got business, and one little battle comes in, you're not ready to fight that battle, you lose that battle, it can mean forever gone, everything gone. So this shield of faith is very important, taking to quench all the fiery darts of the evil one. Right? Even in the physical world, right? a person can be very successful, very, very healthy, whatever. One day, boom, something happened one time on it. The devil like waiting for time. Okay. That's why when we uh Paul says when you have, have wealth, you have money, don't become uh proud. That will become your downfall. 
Okay, taking, the word taking, taking the shield of faith, right? Take up, take up, pick up, has a meaning here. The rest, the earlier, earlier other parts of the armor, you just put on. It's the soldier put on the armor. But the shield, the part actually is separate, right? From the armor. You don't wear the shield. You can hold it, right? But you take it up with the hand. In order to use it, Okay, you take up is to be carried, is to be claimed, is to put as your companion. No, don't let go of the shield to seize, <clears throat> to catch or reach after. Okay, those of you who are going to go through, then you can. Uh, I put all. Uh, I took out some and put in. Even this, I don't simply just copy and paste. Otherwise, that's a very easy job. Select for you what you should be able to understand. Reach after, strive to obtain. Okay? Faith is up to you. It's like the shield. You want to take or not? You want the faith or not? You want to build your spirit man? You want or not? Okay? You have to take it. You have to go after it. <clears throat> it's a bit violent. All right? It's just like, okay, I mean, we'll go on and you help you to understand. You have to get up. Take the, the shield of faith up. It takes some strength. A baby cannot carry physical shield. Can carry or not your baby? <laughs> so heavy. Okay, I'll show you what is the shield in the Roman time when Paul wrote this. Okay, the shield is chiros. <clears throat> it's a shield. It's a large, oblong, four-cornered shield. It comes from the word door. It's a large, like a door. So it is not the round thing, little, or not the shield that I use when cooking. Eh? Then the oil don't splash at me. Very small, me. <laughs> we all call that shield also. No, it's not the little one, shield. And in the Roman time, when this word was uh, mentioned, when Paul mentioned, take up the shield of faith, it is like a door, a big door. Comes from the word tura, all right? When you talk about a uh, door and opening, <clears throat> an entrance, all right? The shield of faith is symbolic of trust and reliance on God. It represents the believer's confidence. Confidence in what? In God's promises and his ability, in his ability to protect and defend them. That's the shield of faith. Faith is based on truth, is built on truth, right? And if you don't want to take that shield to protect, the word is there. But you have to take it up. You have to pick it up. And you have to believe and trust. This is what God said. God said, I will provide for you. I will <clears throat> take care of you. I will give you long life. I have healed you, Elisha. Take it up. Take that promise. Believe it with confidence. Relying on what God said he will do or he has done. This is the, and if we say, Thousand may fall on your right hand, twenty uh, uh, uh ten thousand in your left, they should not come here. Do you believe? Or you still look here, look there, but you don't know how uh, the devil might come, uh, robbers might come. Uh. You still don't believe the word of God that if you are there, no robber can come to your house. If your presence, God's presence is there with you, you got Father, Son, Holy Spirit living inside you, you think the robber there to come in? But we don't believe, right? We live so fearful. I, I like it's Magdalene there, right? Finally, she got the revelation that removed a lot of fear from her. That God won't allow bad things to happen to you. But why sometimes it happens? Because believers don't believe in the ability of God to protect and defend them. Why you worry about your children every day, day and night? Because you simply cannot trust God to take care of them. Correct, Hannah? <laughs> yeah. It has, it's something that I learned as a mother. It's not easy. Because in the natural realm, you will worry for your children. I worried for my son when he come back to, to, due to his job in the beginning, many years ago, some years ago. And then uh, one day I had a revelation and understanding that God loves him more than me and God is able to protect him. I stopped. Even now. 
he don't talk to me every day like some of you and your kids every day must WhatsApp, every day must message. No. So sometimes I go to Facebook and Instagram it's just to see what he is doing. I don't even know. The Facebook knows first. <laughs> Where is which country he is, I also don't know. <laughs> he tells the Facebook, he don't tell me. But I don't have this fear and worry inside me because I know my God will take care of him. That's why I can live listening to God and just, just do without all these unnecessary anxieties. Do you believe what God say is able He's able to take care of you, your children, your family? Jesus, just as a soldier uses a shield to protect himself from the enemy's attack, so too does the Christian use faith to protect him from the attacks of the devil. The more we fear, the more the door open for the devil to come and cause him walk. He said, no, I never fear, I've got faith. Well, <clears throat> the imagery of fiery darts in Ephesians 6.16 is significant. Okay, you see the fiery darts, right? <clears throat> in ancient warfare, soldiers would sometimes dip their arrows in pitch and set them on fire before launching them at their enemies. These fiery darts were particularly dangerous because they could cause both physical and psychological harm. Okay, so you understand fiery darts? Psychological, physical, can be sin, uh, sickness, disease, whatever. Then, what about another duck of lies here? Psychological. Tells you you're not good enough. So you tend to defend yourself. You tend to have fear of what people think. This becomes psychological. Then your emotions come from all those lies. Why is a person, a Christian full of fear of what people think, full of fear, you know, defensive and all that, which is not the fruits of the Spirit. It's because the fiery dart went in already. Somewhere inside the brain, it's one dart, fiery dart that says you need to look good. Not in physical. What I mean is, you know, people need to, you need, you need to be perfect. You cannot be known as someone who is weak. Ah, that is a fiery dark muscle here. Then all the ripple effect. It's dangerous, physical and psychological harm. And then some is insecurity. So insecure. Fiery that went in already. Without money, how are you going to live? Without husband, how are you going to live? Then inside, full emotional, very emo, very insecure. Isn't it harmful? That's a fiery duck. What caused that insecurity? It's a fiery duck from the evil one. We went deep inside already. Don't even realize. In the spiritual sense, the fiery darts of the wicked are temptations, okay? Doubts that cause you to doubt. Really, God can help me pay my bill, man? <laughs> really, God can heal me, man? This sickness doctors say already cannot. Really, God can help, man? Whatever. Then we doubt. Lies and half-truths, right? We don't even know it's a lie. Fears, worries, and anxieties, and the devil uses to try to undermine the faith of the believer. Anyone never experienced all this? That means what? You cannot arrow, fiery arrow, so many times already. <laughs> all right. If you have experienced all this, means what? It means the devil shoot at you many, many times already, every day, enjoying all the little, little ones. And then what happened? Fiery, you know? That means it's dangerous. So it will end up having fears, doubts, temptation, all right? Half truth, worries, anxieties. Worry, anxiety. Elijah, don't let the devil shoot any more fiery darts at you. <laughs> huh? hmm. The Roman soldier's shield was called a scutum. 
Most scutum consisted of wood covered by an animal hide with metal trim around the edges. It was not what most of us imagine, sometimes something circular or like a trash can lid, like a knight in the Middle Ages. So it's not that one that we imagine, huh? small, small one. Instead, it is quite large. So I went and checked okay, exactly what the, uh, the shield was like for a Roman soldier because it is inside the Bible, right? Greek Bible. Ranging about two to three feet wide. Mm, two to three feet wide. Anybody's body is two to three feet wide. <laughs> Elsa. <laughs> One feet, two feet, three feet. We're not even that wide, right? That means it covers your whole body. Correct? All right? Two to three feet wide. Uh, wide means this way. One feet is like that. Two, three. Unless you are broader than three feet. Okay? But soldiers are normally not so fat one. So they are Right, muscular, they are not, not broader than two, three feet. Four to five feet long. Five feet and five feet two inches. Okay, this, this is in feet, huh? so I know the young ones are in centimeter. Okay, five feet tall, five feet two inches. So that means the height of the shield can cover my whole body from head to toe. Big or small? Big, right? Not the little shield that we hold, right? It's so big, the shield, like a door, like a big, large door. Okay, even this picture, uh, this one, the, the right side one, more clearer. Maybe this guy must be bigger. It covers, see, the whole person. <clears throat> it resembles a heavy-duty door. We all know what's a heavy-duty door, not like some doors. You can fling open, then you see, if you just knock, it can open really. Heavy duty against fire. Right? Very heavy. You need to have a lot of physical strength to uh, even push open the door. This is how a shield is. And Paul described the faith as a shield of faith. That means not that easy. Remember last week I said, Fighting the fight of faith is not easy. So you want to take up this faith that is like a shield. If you can take it up, it will protect you from head to toe. Ah, you need spiritual strength to take up this spiritual armor. Okay, which is so heavy. As you can imagine, it took training and stamina for a Roman soldier to carry his shield. Ah, so heavy. Even Hannah, so physically will be difficult to carry. And you carry door, the 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 my my door in my house very heavy. Right? You think you can carry it, right? Cannot, right? But if train the muscles, maybe can. Like a soldier. So needs training, right? To carry, to be a soldier, physical one, all right, to carry this shield. But they need this shield. It's not complete the armor without the shield. Right? Because the main one that can kill them is the arrows of the enemy. So training and stamina. That's where people do physical exercise to uh, have more muscles and more stamina. That is for your physical. Remember spirit, soul, body. You all, most people just protect their body, train their body. But many neglect the spirit man. <clears throat> Training needed, stamina required. Another neat fact is that a soldier could crouch his entire body behind the, uh, his scutum when needed. It's so big. If the faith, you use it, you're able to carry it, you're able to use this faith, shield of faith, you are fully protected from the enemy. In addition, soldiers should, could link their scutum together. So like all of us here in the church, if everyone has got a proper shield, <laughs> don't see physical. Physical is to help you see the spiritual. All right? After don't this Sunday, all bring one shield come. <laughs> okay? All right? Spiritual. Bring faith come. Yes. Bring a word. Okay? To protect. 
to defend, to attack, whichever, right? Together they can form. This is in the natural, and you can see if everyone here in BFA, all right, use faith, the word of God, this is how powerful to form a turtle like shell over the top of that entire unit. Unified as one. One, they could shield each other from falling during vicious attacks. If we don't take faith all right, as a body of Christ, what happened? This one cannot attack, they die themselves. Well. <laughs> Your brother, sister, they cannot attack. right? Instead, that's why how the devil attacks the church, disunity, division, divide them. I'm a Paul, I'm a Paulus. I, I, this one, I see the one jealous. Blah, blah, blah. All thinking for themselves. Not one for all, all for one. It's one for one. Let I say, let chiki say, more he my, more. All right, <laughs> Cantonese. This is the world thinking and go inside the church. The church is, hey, oh, that one, ah. God, you have mind, ah. I cannot help, ah. you just let the fellow do their own self. Ah. Pray, pray for myself. Pray for more blessing, more on me. See all the prayers so selfish. Everything is so selfish. Has, it, has the devil infiltrated? Yes. He didn't know, he didn't even need to appear. Until we come to know the word of God and willing to let God touch our lives, deal with us all the wrong thinking, and let us stand in unity. Everyone carrying the shield of faith. Everyone has a word. Trusting in God's word. Believing what God say. Doing what God say. Agreeing together as one body. When we say, Lord, souls come in. They say, Amen. Go out and bring souls together. Agree. The many lives will be saved. Instead of, uh, that one leave to someone, someone do. Lah. My job only to do this. Right. If we have faith in Christ, this will influence the way we live. <clears throat> Our faith can guard us during trials in the same way a shield would during battle. So not may not be every day, okay, that the, the battle you will face, certain seasons, certain times, certain day, right? <clears throat> but it, the, the life that we live, uh, our faith will guard us during the trials. For example, when doubt creeps in and our beliefs are questioned, our faith in Christ will protect us. We can stand firm in knowing what we believe. Faith is not wait till the battle comes. Wait till the enemy strikes. Some of you don't even know when the enemy strikes because you don't know the truth. All right? Then you build up first. You build yourself with God's word, with like the faith, the word, until become like a shield already, like a door. Then the day the devil tried to kill you or kill someone in your in the church, the body of Christ, you are able to take up the shield and destroy the enemy. <clears throat> in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith which, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. You need to take it. The word is there. Check before. If same like the sword. All right, the word. You need to take it up. It's not say, oh, I got a lot of word. This is the Bible and I'm carrying it wherever I go. It's in my backpack. <laughs> the word should be in your heart. The word of God is not in your backpack. It's in your heart, not at your side table. In your heart. So anytime the enemy comes, it's like, it is written, thus says the Lord. Pew! The arrow miss, cannot, cannot go through your heart, goes up. So the Bible also says, guard your heart with all diligence. Right? Instead of letting words, people say, like, oh, can I already? Can I already? I feel so offended. I feel so hurt today. No. What does the word of God say? It's not personal. <laughs> so why do you need to get hurt? Pew! The arrow cannot go in. Why do you let arrows go in all the time? It's not. And I'll show you what the Holy Spirit showed me to understand this shield of faith and how to train and prepare 
to carry this shield because it's heavy. It's not easy. And God just showed me, uh, gave me the picture of the fireman with the fire extinguisher. It's not in a Google or whatever. As I was preparing, <clears throat> I said, yeah, extinguish the fiery flames of the devil. A fireman had to put on his gear and in a fire. Okay, in order to put out the fire. Fire is dangerous. The bigger the fire grows, the more dangerous, right? It destroys, right? Just now, the lies of the devil, dangerous. Yes, very. Can destroy, right? Psychological, physically, can destroy a person, even a child of God, physically. Nah, huh? Spirit, you'll be safe, can still go heaven. But if that is all that you want, no, right? So, Look at all these firemen and look at the fire extinguisher. What comes up from the fire extinguisher? Some kind of... Uh, let's see, okay? Is it water? Or water come from the pipe, right? To operate an extinguisher, how many of you got fire extinguisher in your house? Don't have one. Okay, when, when I shifted here, huh? oh yes, God. Yes, ah. okay. <laughs> so only Elisha got? In my car, not my house. In your car. <laughs> okay. You put it there or what? Drive grab, must put. Oh, okay. <laughs> the company uh, rule, right? For you to put. So everybody's house here don't have. Okay. When I came here, shifted to this new house, it was already here, the fire extinguisher. Uh, I think it must be the developer put it here or something like that, right? So anyway, how many of you, even if you have a fire extinguisher, you know how to use the fire extinguisher? Uh, okay, like Elijah is a DIY Mr. MacGyver, so he can, he will know. But the rest all? Don't know. So if without Elijah, <laughs> he must be with you all the time, right? If it's not a fire, cannot use, correct? So we have the word of God, but we need to know how to use it. All right? And some don't even have the word of God. <laughs> as in inside here. A fire extinguisher is to put out the fire. The word of God, the shield of faith, is to put out all the arrows that the devil come and hit at you, shoot at you. So you think it was easy to learn how to use fire extinguisher? Maybe for a man, maybe easier, but you still have to learn. So I saw this, right? First, you have to pull, you have to aim, and then squeeze, <laughs> and then sweep. Then after, don't know what, right? Some more, uh, women, not all women are strong as uh, physically as uh, Hannah and Abigail. So, Got strength to do. I think it's some strength, man, correct? It looks like uh, to pull. We didn't even bother. I, di I didn't bother to look at the fire extinguisher from one year already. So how many of us don't even bother to look at how to use the word of God? Until we believe God's word that by its stripes we are healed 100%. Say, now mind, wait for some sick. The doctor say, incurable sickness. Quickly go look for the Bible. <laughs> Which verse ah, that I can come against incurable sickness? Wait for a problem to happen. It's a bit too late, right? Yeah. We need to put the word of God in and learn how to use, how to use the word of God as a shield of faith before the fire comes. That's why you have many Christians whenever there is a situation, panic is the first thing that happens. All right, Hannah? Panic. Why? Inside there, got the fire extinguisher, don't know how to do. You see the fire, you also... How to operate that by the time you try, you get to operate this, the fire already burn you down with it or burn your house down with it. Understand? No? 
you have God already gave us the armor against any attack of the devil, whatever form, lies, before it happens. The word of God, the shield of faith can only come from the word, from knowing the truth. Now, if you don't, that's the training up. And that's the not easy part because the flesh don't want to do. In every situation, you decide to make a decision to stand on act on God's word. But how that time when the fire comes, when the difficulty is there, your head already haywire, decision cannot make from the spirit man, don't know what is God, what is not of God. Still asking what is, is it of God? Is this the devil? <laughs> Still not sure how to, how to wheel off the fire, how to extinguish the fire. Right? Because you still don't know how to use the fire extinguisher. Now, can see a little bit, but still not yet. Why is it so important to build your spirit man with the God's word? In the world, your business, your job and job, you wake up, you get up and you go to work. Correct, everyone here? It doesn't matter what time. Okay. It's your choice of work. If you work as a, a night duty nurse, daytime, you don't wake up. Just all, it's just a shift of time. You wake up, you get up, you go to work. Because you have made a decision to go to work. Is that correct, Anna? Hmm. You go exercise or work out because you make a decision to exercise and work out. Correct? All come from decision. You took the action of getting up aggressively, commanding your body to do what your mind has decided. Isn't it? Has any of you who are working say you have to go to work by 9 o'clock? Some have to go to work by night time. All right, different time. Doesn't matter. Depending on the nature of your job. Okay, so let's let, let put the early one, the, the 8 o'clock one. What do you do, Hannah? Your body feel very tired. Lah. Last night, watch late night movie, for example. Lah. Then, morning, alarm ring also cannot hear already. <laughs> okay. But what happened that you still can be able to finally make it and still get up to go to work? You went against that body of yours. That tells you, very tired, very tired, cannot get up with it. What goes on in your brain? When your body feeling very tired, very lazy, very weak, but you have to go to work, what goes on? You don't, you don't think one so. <laughs> what actually you are doing is you are aggressively saying, get up body, I have to go to work. So you force your body to get up. Isn't it? How many of you didn't force your body to get up? To go to work. <laughs> if your work is that time, as I say, there's no such thing as a... Uh, a freedom of time, right? It is just what, what hour is your work, that's all. Okay, so everyone force their body to get up, right? Or to go to do workout. You did something to your body. Aggressively, your mind, what you have decided in your mind, you have the mind is so strong in this area that's able to Make the body get up. And what is the reason for that? Why your mind suddenly so strong can tell your body to get up and go exercise or go to work or whatever? Why? You go late to work. Then your boss will scold you. Are you sure you're really scared of that one? Late to work. <laughs> Money. Yes, Elsa, correct. It's money. It's money, right? 
because you know that if you don't get up, maybe one day uh, you can be excused, the boss goes, so you can tahan. But the main thing you still do it every day is because of the money behind. Because that money is such a strong motivator that you can command from the head. You made a decision to command your body to get up and go. Even got rain, got sun, thunderstorm or whatever, you will still get up. Body totally don't want to wake up, you still command. The will motivated by money. If you go to a voluntary job that has, you know, okay, if a boss says, I'm not paying you for the next month, will you command your body to get up and go to work? You didn't pay me, man. It's money. I hope we begin to see the truth. You see, because the truth will set you free. If you still deny it, then you live in what you call deception. At the end of the day, it's money motivating people, motivating people to aggressively command their body to do something. Or it can be health for exercise. Some people are so scared of cancer that they make sure they have commanded their body to always exercise. It is out of fear. And now, of course, it may be, you can say it's habit. But basically, it starts from fear. Such a strong motivator. Fear, money. When it comes to God's word and God's things, it seems that it's not strong enough to command this body to go in line with God's word and do what God says. That part. Believers compromise. That part is it. I uh, I so tired lah. I uh, whatever lah. I don't know lah. So many excuses we have. Spirit, soul, and body. That's why Jesus said, "You cannot serve God and money." As good victorious soldier of Jesus Christ, we need to be strong in the spirit so our spirit man can make spirit led decisions. Come to back to the basic. Spirit man need to be strong in order every day to make spirit-led decisions in line with God's word to please our Lord Jesus and win the fight of faith. Not the outer man. Outer man, how strong the devil also can knock you out in one minute. Spirit man, the devil cannot win you. Because your spirit man is strong. It's Christ living inside you. He already lost to Christ. Spirit man. That's why it's so important to build the spirit man. I told you 1,000 times already. The moment I heard from this particular pastor 40 years ago, where he talked about building the spirit man, confession, meditation, praying in tongues, I said, this is what I want to do. This is what I need to do. And that's it. There's no turning back. And every other decision, this is the priority. No, whatever hobby, no time to do is okay. This one, no time to do is okay. But this thing must do. And remember, I reminded, yes, when those days the traffic jam on the road is very terrible. One. To stay somewhere and go to KL is like, one hour or one half hours on the road. What do I do? Because, yes, praise God, I don't need to drive. So do I sleep? No. That's the time I do my meditation confession. Because I realize this is the secret of the power to live the victorious life which I've been seeking for from very young. And the, you think it automatically comes, you become suddenly strong, uh, David, no. To feed this spirit man. Confession, meditation. I do it whatever I can. On the road, lunchtime, breakfast, I don't eat breakfast. Then, whatever time I can find. So, entertainment, don't have. I don't need entertainment. When I'm working, those early young days. Now, it's 
sometimes watch a bit to, when I'm too tired here with my eyes and the, the head already the preparing. You choose whether you want to be weak or strong in the spirit, whether you want you enjoy the fire arrows of the fire, uh, uh, the devil's arrows come, or you're going to take up the shield of faith, no matter how difficult it is against your body. The shield of faith requires our aggressive, aggressively, as you have you aggressively told your body to get up and go to work. Why don't you, spirit man, strong enough, make it strong to be able to tell your mind, stop listening to rubbish and stop, <laughs> body, <laughs> get up. Trust God's word and do what God say, the mature spirit man. This requires us to know how to use God's word against the lies and tricks of the enemy. Okay, so I'm going to let you hear Listen from the great man of faith, Smith Wilgersworth himself. It's about 20 minutes, so just nice. Listen to it. Uh, it's from someone, preacher, who shared from Smith Wilgersworth. So can you put that? Uh, it's about the secret of Smith Wilgersworth faith. Can you all, if you cannot hear, please put up your hand. I'd rather hear together than send you all the video because you may not listen at home. Secrets of their power. My name is Robert Pears from Pure Art Ministries. In this episode, we're going to look at the secrets of the power in Smith Wigglesworth's life. When we look at his life and ministry, it's clear that he walked with an incredible anointing of God and saw incredible miracles and demonstrations of power. He would do courageous things that blow our mind. He would get into a healing service, step up, and say, who is the sickest? Come forth. And he'd bring them up in front of everybody, and he would pray with them recklessly. He would punch, he would hit, and do other things. And he astonished people. Uh, I recall the story once where there's this old lady who's dying of cancer, and he calls her up, and she can't even walk, so she's brought up, uh, and two people are holding her. And he says, let her go. Let her stand, and she falls to the ground. People are horrified. He says, pick her up. And they do. And he says, let her stand. And of course, she falls to the ground again. At this point, he's now lost the crowd. They are screaming at him and thinking how, what a cruel and evil person this man is. And he said, pick her up. And once again, let her go. Well, you can imagine the third time, the outrage of the people, the disgust, this old lady, the pain and everything else that he's inflicted upon her, and he gets madder at them, let her go. Finally, the people holding her do, and she stands. And they look on the ground, and they see the cancer lying on the ground. Well, that's Smith Wigglesworth. He would go into funeral homes and grab bodies and throw them against the wall and command them to live. He had no problem offending you. And when he punched people, he said, it's not my fault if you got in the way of the devil. Because what he saw was the enemy. And he had such a love of people and he had an absolute hatred of the enemy. And that really motivated him and disturbed him. It was a great compassion. It may come across in a very gruff and rough way, but he was a man of great compassion. And what he believed was that with faith, 
There's always an action. Faith demands that you do something. Faith that demands that you're fighting the devil, making a stand continuously. Faith was something that was not yesterday. It's now faith that comes out of a now hope and a now love. He didn't care where you were yesterday spiritually. Where are you today? And he walked it and lived it out himself. This was a man that when he got out of bed, he didn't, sorry, I shouldn't say that. Before he got out of bed, he had to have communion with the Lord. He had to have fellowship with the Lord. And then he would jump out of bed and he would dance and sing for 10 to 12 minutes, delighting himself in the Lord and telling himself who he was in the Lord. People would walk up and say to him, how do you feel? And he'd say, I don't ask Smith Wigglesworth how he feels. I tell him how he feels. That's how he was. Many people would have taken it as gruff as I said. You know, I believe it was Lester Summerall turned up at his door one day. It was a man interesting and trying to get to know Smith Wigglesworth, turns up at his little house and um, comes he's carrying a newspaper and Smith Wigglesworth says, what is that you're carrying? Absolutely, he refuses to let that in the house. He doesn't want lies or deceit in the house. And so Lester Sermon has to leave it outside and come in. And he discovers a man that when he goes in, he's not going to sit down and have a great time of fellowship and teaching, which is what he expected. I want to learn from you. Well, Smith Wigglesworth has them sit down and they get out their Bible and they read. And they read. Then they stop. And then they pray. Then they read. And then they stop. And then they pray. And then they read. And then they go to lunch. They pray. Eat lunch. Then they get back to reading and stuff like that. Lester Summerall left disappointed. You know, I wanted a time of just being poured into. But the next day, all of a sudden, he realized he got something. And he was hungry for more of what he got. Because Smith Wigglesworth had a relationship through prayer and the word with the presence of God. And he discovered that he had fixed his mind cleansed his mind because he believed that the critical ingredient to seeing the baptism of the Holy Spirit with power was not the tearing and waiting. He said, you've received the Holy Spirit. If you just receive him, you get him. But the power component comes when we cleanse ourselves, when we bring every thought captive, when we walk a sanctified life by the mind, soul, and body being in agreement with the Word. And that's why what he did, he did. Why he said what he said? Because he disciplined himself daily through spending time in the Word and prayer that his spirit man was alive. There was a fire. There was an excitement about him. There was an anointing. Many ministers... Live in the anointing of the ministry. When they get up on stage and they preach or do something, God turns up an anointing because of the people. And it's wonderful. It's like being plugged into a wall, the electricity. It's exciting. And then they go and they leave. And so many of them have moral failures and other issues. Why? Because they have not built up their spiritual man to walk in that anointing in daily life. See, we're not meant to just minister in the Spirit. We're meant to walk and live in and by the Holy Spirit. That means continuously staying in that environment where the Holy Spirit is Lord. Where He's Lord, He's going to be continually reminding of the Word. He must have full control over your mind, your thought, your will, and your emotions. If that thought doesn't line up with the Word, it must go. And you must make the decision to deal with it. Paul wrote that we were to lay aside, cast off the old man. A decision you must make. See, we want the Holy Spirit to come in and just change us and transform us with no involvement of ourselves. 
Smith Wigglesworth believed when he saw the word that you must make a decision. You must make a choice and you must cast off and you must discipline yourself through daily praying in the word, continuously praying in the word. It takes a time to build that up. And he explained that great faith is built through great fights. You're not going to get there overnight. It's developed and built over time. You have to go through some things and you have to trust in the word. You have to see breakthrough through the word. It's not always easy. You have to come to a place where it's not what you think and you get your thoughts off of you. What you hold into your hands prevents you receiving what God wants to pour in your hands. When I'm fixed on me and on my concerns, guess what? They are Lord. And we're not able to receive how God thinks about us, what God wants for us. And that's what Smith Wigglesworth was getting at. And Smith Wigglesworth said that he learned everything he knew from his wife, Polly Wigglesworth. She taught him to read. But I want you also to understand, he, of course, stepped into the healing ministry that I believe was a Dowie church in Leeds that he then would share the healing ministry with Polly and she got actively involved. Now she had been, of course, in the Salvation Army. She had got great ranks and was going up the ladder and was becoming well accepted and had a great career in the Salvation Army. She had learned a lot from the Salvation Army, which she shared. Of course, uh, Smith was also in the Salvation Army and they learned how to pray. You know, something powerful about the Salvation Army was the fact that they prayed at that time. They would come together with an agreement that they're believing God for 50 news people to come to the Lord. And they prayed and they fasted and they were desperate before God. There was a fervency. There was a light to their prayer. There was something about their prayer that Smith saw and it changed him and he liked. And him and Polly prayed like that. Smith Wigglesworth often said, you need to storm heaven. Before he would go in and pray over people, he stormed heaven. So often he would face some incredible challenges, some of the greatest sicknesses. But he said he had stormed heaven before he got in there so that he, so we are reactive. He proactively prayed so that when he went in, he had already won the victory and had the resources and the provisions of heaven for the need. He learned so much from Polly Wigglesworth. She started to receive the leaves of healing. Dowie was a man that learned a lot because of his, the church that he'd been a part of, that he got saved, came from the Edward Irvingites. And Edward Irving taught strongly, line upon line, precept upon precept. And we see that in Dowie. So that when you are building something scripturally, like the healing message, it's line upon line, precept upon precept. It's not just taking a verse here, but building it from the Word. It has to be consistent in the Word. And so Paul Wigglesworth taught him from the leaves of healing the um, doctrine, the depth of the doctrine of healing. They share the same mindset as Dowie, that they reject all kinds of medicine. And they go after it with the same intensity as Dowie. Now, of course, Polly Wigglesworth would be baptized by Dowie, uh, I believe it was 1901, uh, but Smith Wigglesworth was not. Uh, Smith Wigglesworth is perhaps mentioned, his street, of course, his wife is mentioned in the Leaves of Healing. But he learned a lot. When she died, it became one of the greatest challenges. And when people ask him, what's the secret of your power? He would point to that event because he lay on her grave, recognizing here's the lady that's meant most to me, not just in the natural, but spiritually. I am where I am today because of her. He had backslidden. He'd gone through a period of time where he was a man of great anger. He would get just enraged with anger. And Polly Wigglesworth was a woman of great love. And of course, there was infinite incidents where he locks her out. 
he learns from him, and of course he locked himself away for 10 days, and he sought the Lord, and it really brought forth the real change that Smith Wigglesworth was never the same after that. He never got angry after that. But it was Polly Wigglesworth, she provoked him. She challenged him to go higher. You know, I believe that's an awesome trait in people. It's not just to encourage you, but to challenge you to go further to challenge you to go deeper. What a wonderful thing when we meet people in ministries that provoke us, stir us, and there's something deeper, there's something more out there. And they provoke us to go further with that. And, of course, Polly did. So he lays on her grave, and he's broken. And he's in tears. And God says, get up and go. I can't. Get up and go. It said, if you give me her anointing and mine. And he got up and he really began in that second stage um, after 1912. You see that he would come to America. And the, the Wigglesworth that we know really came after that time period. There's a boldness to him. There is a, an incredible anointing. He goes after things with great ferocity. And I believe it was out of that event because at that point he died. It was him and the Lord. He experienced several things. He experienced, of course, we know the hemorrhoids from earlier in his life, but he also experienced where he um, herniated his back and he was in severe pain, unable to walk in his later age. And he would not back down or quit or give it. He was a man that lived it out. And he saw victory over he, uh, sickness in his own life by fighting it with the word he fought daily through faith attacking it speaking over it coming against it and it came out i believe this event where he died and he was completely sold out there's something powerful when you come to a place and you consecrate yourself to the lord you give yourself an absolute commitment any of the great heroes of faith that stepped into a high call, that was a critical ingredient. They consecrated themselves. And I believe there and then he did. When he got up, the old man was gone. He went on. He had nothing left to live for. He was pressing forward towards heaven. But every day on the earth, and he lived to be an old age, he would do as much damage and win as many souls for Jesus. His faith had an action, and he would stir people, are you ready? Ready for what? For more. He wanted you to walk in victory with a laugh on your face. That you should be having fun and enjoying the Holy Ghost. Life should be exciting. Life should be filled with the joy of the Lord. He would challenge churches. They would bring them in, and he would get up and say, Did you come into this place with thanksgiving and shouting and praising? Well, you know what? Go back out and come back in doing it. Because he took the word literally and he lived it out. I think many of us love Smith Wigglesworth. I'm not sure how many of us would like to have an afternoon or a day with him. He probably would challenge you. He'd probably stretch you. He would probably offend you. But maybe we need that. If we are going to go deeper and further, We've got to get a greater hunger and commitment and a consecration of our lives. We've got to sell out. We've got to be prepared and ready. Ready for what? For more. That God, the Lord God, the limitless God, wants to give us so much more than we're able to receive. If we would just step forward in faith and obedience, and that in the difficult and dark times, just hold on, keep fighting by faith. Because there was always a fresh hope in Smith Wigglesworth. And we've got to have a now hope, a now faith, and a now love. Well, I pray that you're encouraged and provoked. And that you would just be, as I said, come to this place of absolute commitment. And get in you that ready spirit and live boldly for Jesus. Thank you. Okay, amen.
Yeah, good. I saw Abigail writing down. You all can remember without writing down anything? <laughs> there are so many gems that he said there, right? So, <clears throat> can I challenge you all some more? <laughs> Provoke you all for more. That's why it's the main thing. Pastor, I already do so much already. Why is it like, it's like you're not satisfied? No. It's not that I'm not satisfied. There is much more for each and every one of you. It's in the spirit. God wants to raise each one of you as warriors, not warriors, that you will advance the kingdom of God. Can see, but need to provoke, need to challenge, and as what this uh, Smith Lucas would say. He doesn't care sometimes it may have it will be offensive to certain ones. It may sound offensive and may have offended in certain areas, but it's because I want I can see the much more that all of you are capable of in the Lord. Amen. Yeah, that each one of you will grow from faith to faith. Okay, take up the shield of faith and do mighty things for Jesus. In the power of God, when your spirit man is built strong and in line with the word and the spirit. Amen? Amen. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. We'll share more on Wednesday. All right. See you all tomorrow. So if you all didn't write down, then listen again and write down because there's so many things inside there. Okay. Thank you.